Because there's so many different parts of Istanbul, it can be kind of hard to navigate your first time through. And since it's one of my favorite cities in the world, I thought I'd put together a list to help you get the most out of this amazing city. So let's get into it. Number 1. Istiklal Street and Taksim Square Now this is in the Karakoy district, otherwise known as the European side of the city. And true to its name, this is where you'll find a lot of up and coming restaurants, hip new clubs, rooftop bars. A lot of the city's energy could be found here, as well as boutiques and pastry shops. Now, this is by far one of the busiest areas of the city with up to 3 million people visiting in a single day. And it may sound a little bit touristy, but as soon as you start to branch off and duck down some of the side alleys, you find out what this spot is really about. Number two, nightlife. Now it may surprise you to hear that Istanbul has an off the hook party scene with places opening around 9 p.m. and not shutting their doors until six in the morning. And for years, the area of Karakoy has been the meeting point of Istanbul's hipsters and artists, with hundreds of bars being located around Istiklal Street. Now what you want to look out for when going out in Istiklal is the rooftop bars, because most of the bars are actually located on the second, third, or fourth floors of the buildings. And they seldom have signs. So if you enter a bar on the ground floor, look for a tiny stairwell that leads upwards, and chances are you'll find at least two, or maybe even three more bars above you. For a full list of my favorite clubs and bars, check out my website, link in the description. Number 3. Street Art Now it is impossible to go through Istanbul without noticing the street art, because it is amazing and it is everywhere. Now the two places that you'll find most of Istanbul's graffiti is in Katakoy, which is the Asian side of the city, and Karakoy, the European side, with the Asian side of the city being the more prominent of the two. Now that being said, there is so much high quality art in the city that I actually recommend taking an afternoon to just wander the streets of Katakoy and discover some of the best pieces for yourself. Not to mention Katakoy is filled with local produce markets, fish markets, and tiny little cafes that are great to have a coffee at. Not a bad place to spend a day. Next, we'll move into the Old Town, the district of Eminonu, and the Sultanahmet Jami Mosque, otherwise known as the Blue Mosque. And this mosque was constructed in the early 1600s by Sultan Ahmet, and is still an active place of worship today. So you have to be careful timing your visit because it's actually closed for 30 minutes five times during the day, during the five prayer periods. It's known as the Blue Mosque because of the hand-painted blue tiles that are part of the walls of the inside. And it's widely considered to be the last great mosque of the classical period. It's a true feat of engineering. Number five, the Bosphorus Boat Tour. Now in order to get a good idea of the size and scope of the city itself, it's a good idea to try the Bosphorus Boat Tour. These are the boat tours that follow the river that separates the different parts of Istanbul all the way out to the Black Sea. And there's a couple different options. The first is the short circle Bosphorus Boat Tour, which lasts around two hours. It goes just past the Fatih Sultan Mehmet Bridge, which is the second main suspension bridge. The other is the full Bosphorus Cruise, which lasts around six hours. It goes all the way out to the Black Sea and the Euros Castle. Now you can get tickets for both of these in the building just to the right of the Galata Bridge and ask for more information to decide which one's best for you. Now there's a bonus because on the left side of Galata Bridge, you can stop for lunch at one of the fish sandwich restaurants that are made on rocking boats and given to customers on the shore. Number six, food. Now food plays such a huge part in traveling because it can tell you a lot about where the people and culture come from. And I really believe that you can learn just as much about a country from a meal there as you can from reading an entire book about it. Okay, that might be an exaggeration, but you get the point. And Turkish food is amazing because it combines Central Asian, Middle Eastern, Eastern European, and Balkan cuisines to create their own unique foods. Now, if you're looking for specific restaurants to try, again, check out my website, which I'll put in the description of this video. But some specific dishes to look out for is balik ekmek, which is basically like a fish sandwich. I talked a little bit about that earlier. Kumpir, which is like a baked potato, but taken to the extreme. 
topped with almost everything, including meat, olives, cheese, pickles, corn. You can basically put anything in it. And of course, donor, which is traditionally used in a kebab. Number seven, the Hagia Sophia. Now this is probably the most widely known mosque in Istanbul. It was built in the beginning of the Middle Ages in 537 AD, and for nearly a thousand years, it was the world's largest cathedral. It was constructed by Byzantine Emperor Justinian I as a church, and its purpose was changed several times until Constantinople was conquered by the Ottoman Empire, who converted it into a mosque. And I mean, seriously, when you look at it, it doesn't look like it would be too hard to construct today. But imagine you're Isidor of Miletus, and it's 537 AD, and you've just been told by the emperor of the Byzantine Empire to construct a church that's over 180 feet tall. That's pretty crazy. It was truly an engineering marvel of its time, and something you can't miss while in Istanbul. Number 8. The Grand Bazaar the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul is actually regarded as one of the first shopping malls in the world and is one of the largest and oldest covered markets. It was constructed shortly after the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople in 1455. And it was the most interesting place in the city at that time because it was the only place where different classes mixed. Any average citizen could rub shoulders with men of the court or women of the imperial harem which was pretty radical for that time. It's even said that sultans used to come in disguise to the market to occasionally eat. Today, it's mostly filled with trinket shops where you can get jewelry, glassware, rugs, board games. It's the place you go if you want to test your haggling skills, but be prepared for a very hard bargain. Number nine, the spice market, also known as Mushir Çarşısı in Turkish. This is the second largest covered market after the Grand Bazaar. It's located just next to the Yeni Cami Mosque, or New Mosque, in the Emino New District of the city. You won't find as many tourists here, and it's geared more towards locals, which is why I actually prefer it over the Grand Bazaar. Number 10. Topkapı Palace. This was the royal residence of the Ottoman sultans throughout their rule, and also served as the imperial treasury, the imperial library, and the city's mint. This was the main seat of power of the Ottoman Empire. Today, it's been converted into a museum. It includes various artifacts like Ottoman clothing and weapons, and allows public access to what was once the Ottoman imperial harem and the treasury. It's located right next to the Hagia Sophia, so it's a natural stop on your trip. Last but not least, number 11, Eminonu. Now I touched on this a little bit already, but Eminonu is the old city district of Istanbul. And apart from just being where the Hagia Sophia and Grand Bazaar are located, this is the discount shopping center of the city. And the streets are laden with makeshift stalls, as well as millions of little workshops in the streets. What's so amazing about this place is you can turn a corner and that particular street will be the center of trade for a product. Like there'll be two by two blocks of just shoes. Every single store is just shoes. Or you turn down an alley and all of a sudden you're surrounded by Levi's, so dense you can't even get through them. It's stuff like this that makes it a fun place to spend a day just wandering around and figuring out how everything runs. That being said, at nighttime, everything shuts down, mostly because the area is a little bit more conservative and the hustle and bustle of the day is replaced by a kind of an eerie quiet that can be slightly off-putting. So time your trip accordingly. So guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you've been there yourself and have other recommendations, leave them down below. And as always, see you next time.